Welcome back into the studio. Very pleased now to be joined by a man who's uh, going to help us break down and demystify the quarterback position in the coming weeks, uh, Jordan Palmer. Jordan, uh, thanks for joining us on Sky Sports. Yeah, I'm fired up to be here. This is going to be a blast. Good stuff. Well, I'm going to just introduce you to the audience. So let's have a look at Jordan's uh, fact file so that we can uh, see what we are uh, talking about here and what we're going to be uh, breaking down. But this is Jordan's career. He played college football at University of Texas, El Paso. He uh, was a four-year starter, drafted by Washington in 2007. Uh, played for the Bengals, where he backed up his older brother Carson. Also the Jags, the Bears, the Bills, the Titans. Uh, retired in 2014 to become a quarterbacks coach. And there are some of the names. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Sam Darnold, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and of course, working on many of the top high school and college quarterbacks as well. So, Jordan, I'd love to just get the, the kind of top line level of uh, when you're talking to young players, what positions they want to play. We always hear it said that, you know, the toughest position in any sport, in all of sports, uh, is the quarterback. Uh, maybe you can give us an insight into the position. Well, I, clearly it's the most talked about. And, uh, you know, in, in the States, we have, you know, GQ magazine every year takes a poll. Uh, the, what is the most desired profession amongst men and i joke around every year it's in a folk and you hear joker you know you know lines like oh the best job in the world is being a backup quarterback and um you know here we are in the media and we kind of put the slate together for pretty much every show around mentioning a large percentage of it is the quarterback and then you know if you're really a fan you follow these teams you know that there's one of two nfl teams there's a team that has a franchise quarterback or a team that's looking for their franchise quarterback. So everything starts and stops with the quarterback. It's what we love to talk about. It's where our eyes go. You, you essentially build your fantasy roster around your quarterback, as does the general managers. Um, and therefore, it's the most scrutinized. But what's interesting is, you know, and we, we put my fact file up there with my career. And uh, look, I, I'm not a giant, famous, superstar Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, and I only had one offer out of high school. Um, I was drafted late. I was cut right away. I had to kind of bounce around and claw my way in. Uh, but my older brother, Carson, was the number one pick in the draft, won a Heisman Trophy. When he retired, he was the highest paid player in the history of the league. And so I had lived kind of both of those lives um, and seen what, what went into both of those. And I've just developed such an appreciation for how difficult this sport is and, and really specifically how difficult this position is. We love to break it down. We love to sit here and go, oh, man, that guy, how did he miss that guy? Oh, my gosh, this guy was wide open. The guy barely hit him. We, we make all these comments. I'm guilty of it, too. Um, and yet nobody really appreciates just how difficult this position is and what goes into it. So given the level of play you considered yourself to be, and so you maybe you, you maybe had to work at it more than some other quarterbacks, did, do you think that helped you move into coaching? Uh, it did. It, I think for me, I hung my hat on uh, on the mental side of it. So uh, I'm six I'm five, and I you know played it around two thirty. But um, you know, size is one attribute. There's five eleven guys that are playing at a high level right now. So um, so it's clearly being tall is not, is not the only requisite. Um, but I, I, I approached it from the mental side, and that's where I, I kind of realized early on in my career that I was better at explaining it than doing it. So to be honest with you, th those are some names that I've worked with. I've worked with a lot more. Um, and, and a lot of the college guys I'm working with are coming up in this next year's draft and the, and the draft following. Uh, but for me, I own the mental side of it. And, you know, we can sit here and watch games and people say, you know, the, the quarterback's doing this or, um, you know, or give a thumbs up or alert or any of these different terms, right? What people don't realize is that that play call could be something like H set to gun spread right H, hot dual China drive F read, alert Mustang Dragon on a white one. That's two plays. If it's man zone, single high, two high, I'm going two different ways. If it's pressure, I'm going to go over here to the, uh, I'm going to alert it, go to the second cadence. I'm going to go to this Mustang. If it's zone, I'm going to go to the Dragon. I got to slide the protection. I got, that's like all happening. And that headset that the quarterback has, that cuts off when there's 15 seconds left on the play clock. Meaning not all these coaches get the play in with very much time. And so your quarterback may only hear half that, have to have the second half memorized. One of these guys is going to break the huddle and be like, hey, uh, what would you say? Which side is it? And so it's just like there's so much going on before the quarterback actually has to say set hut and do something with that football. So um, I, I love scrutinizing. I love, you know, breaking down guys. But 
Um, because I played, it's not that I know more. It's that I have more of an appreciation for how difficult this position is. And so hopefully, Neil, our time together, I'm going to help demystify this quarterback position. Um, I, I work with a lot of the elite players, but I also work with kids as young as 10 years old. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to come in and help kind of break down what's really happening here, um, not just between the lines on Sundays, uh, but between these quarterbacks' ears. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. Um, so you mentioned there a little bit about there are quarterbacks who are 5'11", quarterbacks like yourself who are 6'5". Has that changed over the years? Do you think we're now seeing uh, more openness to different types of quarterbacks? Yeah, absolutely. This is just the, the, the quarterback position has never been more equal opportunity. Um, you know, there was a time when everybody was right-handed, six foot four, Caucasian, and from one of seven colleges, right? It was just like, it was a very established position. Um, but I, I think the majority of the, the highest paid, I think it's four of the top five highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL right now are African-American uh, with Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray coming up. Um, we've got Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Tua Tagovailoa. Those guys are all under six feet tall. You know, Drew Brees and Russell Wilson before them. We just had our second quarterback drafted from North Dakota State. Now, if you're watching this, you're not super familiar with the college football landscape. <laughs> that is not one of the top colleges in the country. Okay, That's our second quarterback drafted in the top three. Carson Wentz was the second pick overall a few years ago. Trey Lance this last year was the third overall pick from North Dakota State. We've had two kids that grew up on, on a small island out in the, uh, in the Pacific in Hawaii, Marcus Mariota and Tua Tagovailoa, who were both top five picks. One of them won a Heisman. The other one won a national title. Uh, one of them's a lefty. So is, there's just never been more diversity, and it's size, race, the school that they went to, their style of play uh, than we've ever had before. And I think that makes it really exciting. And when I look down the line at college and even some of the top high school kids, it's just going to get – that, that, that uh, will just be more pronounced as time goes on. So with that in mind then, so there are all these different types of quarterbacks, their different approaches to how they play, maybe how they throw, how they move. Is there something, or maybe it's one or two things, that you are looking for that have to run through every NFL quarterback? And maybe it's not even a physical thing. Is there something that you want every quarterback to have? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I've talked about this quite a bit, and it's it's one of those deals where I, I, I'm uniquely positioned to have an opinion on it because I, for the most part, I've been around all the quarterbacks one way or another whether it was a high school program, college, kind of around all these guys. Um, and so it's not nothing that shows up on, on TV per se or, you know, in their stats. But my eye goes to when I'm evaluating quarterbacks, whether that's the top kid in the country going to college or somebody for the NFL draft, uh, my eye goes to two things. It's confidence and it's maturity. Confidence to me uh, is not saying I think I can, I think I can. Um, but confidence to me, there, there's really two types of confidence. There's self-generated confidence, where that play, player believes this about himself, independent of the environment, meaning I don't even care what anybody else thinks. And then there's players who have reactionary confidence, where if everybody says you're good, you believe them. And if everybody says you're a bum, maybe you wonder if they're right. And a lot of players have reactionary confidence. So on a, when things are going well, they look really confident. Mm. And when things are not going well, they don't. You have to have so, uh, the, the unwavering, self-generated confidence. And then on the maturity side of things, I think of guys who get thrown into situations they've never been in before, and yet it always kind of goes well for them, and they always seem to have it under control. And you say, well, how does that happen? Well, everybody who's ever won a Super Bowl played in their first Super Bowl at some point. And a lot of people win their first Super Bowl. Hmm. And a lot of people get thrown into really difficult situations and handle them. And I think back to Joe Burrow, because he was one of the guys, for me, I called it in July. I said, this guy's got a chance to be before his season be it a Heisman, number one pick, you know, national champion. But the reason I believe that was not his physical traits. It was because he was the most confident and the most mature kid I'd met at that age with a great team in a great situation. So I just thought uh, that was what my bet was placed on. And so, Joe, you think about LSU a couple years ago, they go 15-0, and national title, all these records. Well, when they were 6-0, and nobody in that building had ever been 6-0. and When they were 9-0, and no one had ever been 9-0. and So you had to have a quarterback who was mature enough I'll get everybody to not freak out and get too excited and let's build a championship. And so um, I think of Joe, I think of Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence and all these guys I've been around, Patrick Mahomes, where they were extremely confident and extremely mature. And if you look at all the guys I've worked with, they're all physically different. But those were the two common denominators.
Uh, Jordan, I can see a, a, a lovely handwritten note on a shirt from Josh Allen behind you. Of course, so much was made of Josh Allen uh, from his first couple of years in the NFL to the leap he made uh, last year. And, and I guess you broke down a lot of the techniques and, and we've, we've kind of got an image of uh, a side-by-side -side of, of Josh Allen from early in his playing days and what we saw uh, last season and how he's progressed. What, what did you have to fix with Josh Allen? Well, it really does start with the ground up. It starts with the base at which you throw from. And uh, part of that is, you know, just the width of your feet. Um, but really, really simply here, um, we create energy when we push the ground away, when we start to throw. And really want to create as much energy as we can. And then we want as much of that energy to flow through our body and out our fingertip when you release the ball as possible. So the, the kind of little story I tell is, let's say that, that every time you throw and every time you push the ground away, you create a hundred gold bars of energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. The goal is to have all 100 come out your finger. So anything you do between starting your throwing motion and finishing your throwing motion, anything you do, you're going to, it's inefficient. You're going to lose some of those gold bars of energy. And the reality is that most NFL quarterbacks throw like 65 to 75% of what they created because there's just some movement that's inefficient. And so with Josh early on, it was a lot of it was, was really inefficient, um, incredibly talented um, and was willing to buy in and not just with me, but with all of the great coaching he's had really buy in once he got into the NFL and preparing for the draft and with his physical traits and what I saw and, and his ability to buy in, I knew the sky was the limit. I honestly, I, I, I believe, I always believed he'd get to where he is right now. I, I was pretty, pretty blown away of how quickly he got there. Um, there was a lot of things that he needed to fix and own. And uh, the, the pace at which he fixed those and owned those things was, uh, was pretty shocking to me. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I don't think the NFL has either. Um, but really what it came down to was just him having inefficient movements and us retraining those movement patterns and then training him to a place where he can self-correct and manufacture those on his own. Not too dissimilar from a golf swing, um, but it's really about getting great behaviors and getting very consistent movements and behaviors uh, and how you approach it. It's not not just kind of ripping it and using talent. Uh, one more, Jordan, just quickly. We're almost out of time, but I want to just take us behind the curtain of, of the job you do. When Let's say it's a high school kid or a college kid. They, they come in front of you for the first time and they drop back to throw that first pass. Is there one thing you're looking at? Is it feet, arms, or are you, just, are you actually for a first few throws looking at everything? I'd be fascinated to know where your eyes go first. Yeah, I, I think with if it's a really young guy, uh, it can go anywhere. But if it's a if it's a guy who's already had some success, high school or college, and I'm evaluating for the first time, their pelvis and their trunk, how much do those separate? So their hips and their midsection, how much do those separate when they throw? When they step at their target, does everything move together, or does the pelvis rotate first and then the trunk? Your upper body and your lower body have to separate. That's where we create torque. Some guy, everybody, it can all be trained for anybody. But if somebody does not separate those two things when they throw, then that's where we're starting. If somebody does separate it, then I, now I want to look at their feet and where they're creating the energy in the first place. So really, that's where my eyes go, right at their midsection early on to help separate it and put them into one or two buckets. All right. Uh, Jordan, this is going to be great. I feel smarter already. Thank you. It's brilliant. Really appreciate <laughs> that and look forward to working with you. Yeah, same here. I'm fired up. Thanks for having me.